Good evening, everybody. Aaron here with AV Astronomy. Man, does time fly. I cannot believe it's been nearly four months since my last video, and I figured it's about darn time that I did another one. So, tonight we are going to be doing a video tutorial on how to process M42, also known as the Orion Nebula. And I only use two programs to do this, Deep Sky Stacker, which is a free software, and Adobe Photoshop. In tonight's video tutorial, we're gonna just be covering the Photoshop section. And I think you'll find that my current workflow, while it hasn't changed a lot over the past couple of years, is pretty quick. So let's get into this. All right, so first thing you're gonna wanna do is retrieve those stacked images from Deep Sky Stacker, whatever folder you save that in. Go ahead and pull those into Photoshop. And the way I do this, when I image M42, I actually take two different sets of images. One you see here, which is the longer exposure. I did 10 minute subframes and I got in about 20 or 25, I think, on this one. And then I do about 30 very short exposures. I believe these were only five seconds. And I'll show you why in a minute while we do that, but it will help us retrieve this blown out data in the core. So let's get started. First thing you're gonna wanna do is duplicate your layer by pressing Control J. And let's go ahead and perform our initial stretch. So press Control M. Now, you can use something called arc sign stretches, which should be available still online for download. I'll post a link in the description if they are. They should be. I've had these for quite a while now, but they're, they're really, really convenient. And they do a really good job in stretching the data without bloating the stars as much. But even if you don't have those, you can perform your own stretches manually. So if you have the arc sign stretches, I usually start out with an arc sign 30. Hit OK. Then we're going to go into levels, press Control L. And let's drag that slider right to where that data starts okay and we're going to repeat and do the same exact thing control m to bring up the curves menu only this time i'm going to run an arc sign 10 it's not quite as strong as the 30. hit ok same thing control l for levels and let's bring that slider on back hit ok now as you can see what we have here is a pretty nasty light pollution overlay here that, that's got to go. So what I do is essential. It's almost it, it's similar to what I guess a dynamic background extraction uh, does with in PixInsight, except I do it manually here. So you just duplicate the layer, Control J, click on the bottom layer, layer one, and I'm sorry, go back to your top layer. You're gonna make a uh, solid layer that's gonna be subtracted from the bottom layer to pull out all this green, and, and it's really simple. Uh, I just take my dropper tool, do sample size 31 by 31, sample, and you press alternate backspace, and it turns that uh, layer into that solid color that you sampled. Go back and click on the layer one. Go to image. Apply image. Make sure the source is the proper frame. Okay. Layer merged, RGB, and you're going to go to subtract. 
and I do an offset of 25. You can change this to your liking, but 25 seems to work well for me. And hit OK. You'll notice when you unclick this, look at that. It cleans it up so nicely. That green is gone, and all the natural colors you collected are there. So let's throw away this top layer. Just click on it, left click, hold down left click, and drag it to that trash can. All right. Let's duplicate the layer again. Control J. And now let's add back in some of that color we've lost when we were stretching our data. So we're going to go to Camera Raw Filter. And we're just going to boost the vibrance a bit. Say maybe 40 and then saturation 25. Something like that. Okay. Hit OK bring back some of that color that gets washed out when you stretch the data and we'll do this a couple of times make sure we're keeping our star color and our nebula color as well let's do some more data stretching so you know what to do control m let's run another arc sign 10 hit okay now you can really start to see some of this these uh dust lanes here surrounding the nebula is starting to show through. Control L, and there's still room to drag that slider all the way. Now we can see the gradient that is here from the light pollution as well. Now I use a plugin called Gradient Exterminator by Russell Croman. It's on his website. You can still download it. It works with PixInsight and with Photoshop. And I usually run it on medium, medium. But I do something before I actually run it I to keep it from... I don't want it to mess with this data, just the area around it, right? So we're going to take our lasso here, feather it at 10 pixels, and just draw yourself a circle around your target. Select Inverse, and then go to um, Filter, RC Astro, Grading Exterminator. Medium, medium. And boom, that grading is gone. So, instead of stamping it forward, which I could do, um, it just eats up a ton of RAM. Uh, I just flatten. If I'm happy with what I've got going so far, I just flatten the image, it takes up less data, and then go back to Control J to duplicate that layer. So let's go to levels and see where we're at. We can move the slider just a tad. We don't want to clip the data where it starts to come up on the histogram here on that curve. And we can do another stretch. So we're going to do M, and this will probably be the last stretch. Arc sign 10. Boom. L. Let's bring that data back a little bit. Okay. We're going to run an iteration of Camera Raw Filter again. And this time, not only are we going to boost that color, bring it back. Vibrance and Saturation. It brings it back pretty nicely. We're also gonna just conservatively use the clarity slider because if you go too heavy with it it really also bleaches out the stuff it just blows the stars out it's I don't like it so we want to take it easy on that let's do maybe just 10 and then this this is where this thing really br helps bring out some of this faint detail the D haze Watch what happens when I slide this on over. Look at that. Look how the that faint detail just starts to pop from the background. So I did a pretty aggressive slide on that. That's up to 58. Let's go to detail, and you'll notice when you stretch the data this far too, it, you know, I've only got 20 frames stacked here. If I had more dithered frames, this probably wouldn't be as much of an issue, but there's you're always going to be dealing with some form of noise. So we're going to do just a little bit of noise reduction, not too much because it does soften the image if you do it too much, just a little bit. 
and color noise reduction. Boom, there we go, the color noise is gone. Okay, let's hit okay on that. Boom, now this thing's really starting to pop, but you notice there's still like a greenish hue to the whole thing. And this is another plugin that really comes in handy for this. It's called Hasta La Vista Green, HLVG from Deep Sky Colors. And I've had this a while. I honestly can't tell you if this was free or not. If, if it is, if it does cost something, it's not much. I think it's at most it's like 10 bucks or something. But I'll put a link in the description for this one as well. Same with the uh, Gradient Exterminator so that you guys have access to those. But I run this on medium usually. And boom, it just does a beautiful job of not getting out. That green is gone. In fact, let's duplicate the layer, Control J. And we're gonna run one more iteration of that, only I'll, I won't use the full effect of it. We'll do medium. And let's see, actually, you know what? I like that. That green is totally gone now. So we've done two iterations of that. And now we are almost ready to move on to the next step, which is going to be incorporating this into the core, which is at this point completely blown out. So let's do that. Let's flatten this out. Happy with what we got. Control J. And let's tab on over to this other image here. Now remember, this is my stack of 35 second exposures of Orion and you'll see why in a minute why I did that so let's start stretching this data control M start running your your stretches manually or the arc sign and let's do another one I probably could have done a 30 or so let's do a 30 this time there we go data starting to come through control L let's bring that slider on back control M again Another stretch. Now we're getting there. Control L. And we'll go right about there. Stretch it one more time. Arc sign 10 is what I'm going to go with. And let's pull out some of that gradient and some of that greenish color we don't like. Let's do one more stretch. Actually, before we do that, just like before, let's add some of that color back in because we have lost some. But even look at this, even with five seconds, look how much detail you get. It's pretty awesome. So let's throw in some of that vibrance back in, some of that color saturation back in. Hit OK. Okay, that green's starting to show too. Let's do one more stretch on this. Boom, there we go. Control L. All right, now we can see we got to pull out that light pollution. So let's duplicate this layer, Control J. And just as before, we're going to sample right about here where there's no stars, 31 by 31 average. Press alternate backspace, click on the bottom layer, the middle layer here, layer one. Go to image, apply image, subtract. Same thing as before, boom, cleans it right on up. And let's run camera raw filter one more time here. we've got some noise on this as well so go to the detail tab do a little noise reduction and a little color noise reduction there we go and let's go back to the vibrance and saturation there we go that course looking pretty good and we can do just a little clarity right there all right so now we're good. We've stretched this out. Let's flatten it out. And we want to merge this core and layer it into this image here. And this is how we're going to do it. 
you're going to select this image by pressing Control A then Control C you're gonna tab over to the other image and paste it right on top Control V you're then going to create a layer mask by pressing this little icon right here go to your layer below it you're gonna copy this one now Control A Control C alternate left click on the mask Control V and there's your mask now we need to refine this so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into filter blur Gaussian and we want to blur this thing a lot like maybe about a hundred pixels I think seems to be the sweet spot for this particular target you can play around with that but I feel like a hundred pixels has, has been working pretty good for me on this hit OK and we want really to only mask in the core so all this other area we, we want that completely blacked out so go to your paintbrush make sure it's on black and let's paint that all in because in Photoshop black conceals and white reveals so if it's in black it will not shine through on the mask We're really just trying to preserve that core, so let's get that right about there. That should be good there. And look at that. Now, I, ha I haven't perfectly aligned this yet. We want to lower the opacity a little bit so we can actually see what we're working with. Press Control Plus. We're going to zoom in. Make sure you activate the moving tool here. Free transform so you can move that image until it lines up perfectly. and boom there we go that is lined up and look at that that core is nicely properly exposed now you've got nice detail in there looks great and that is really about it on this I'm gonna do a little crop crop out those um, stacking artifacts from earlier but there you go. That is it. Three hours on M42. And look at all this. And this was shot in the yellow zone. I'm, I'm, I'm not even in really that dark of skies. It's probably a Bortle 5 or so out here. And you can still capture a lot of this faint wispy detail. You just got to pull that data out with these stretches. Oop. All right. Let's flatten that out. And that's it, guys. That is the tutorial. I hope you found it helpful, and I hope it helps you in future astrophotography projects. And as always, certainly appreciate all of you guys who follow my content and find it beneficial. If you found this video helpful today, like and subscribe, and be sure to check out the description for quick links to Russell Croman's Gradient Exterminator, the 8 Hasta La Vista Green plugin, and I also have some links to OPT and Agena Astro for gear to help get you started on the right foot. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Keep on looking up, keep on seeking, and until next time, clear skies.